All right, well, it's time for the 440 to go in. So, MERS over, things all paint up. I gotta just do a little, little small amount of cleaning up. MERS concerned, because it's cold out and we have to open the door because I don't have the length. It's a little chilly. Oh my God. So, he, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make him do it. Anyways, so all ready to go. There's still a few things that have to be taken care of, uh, such as, I mean, it has no rally pan, stuff like that, it's full of rags. Uh, there's no valve cover gaskets on it. But once it's in the car, I can take the valve covers off, the intake off, do all the gaskets, put it all back in. Just kind of doing the last, it was missing a couple of uh, bell housing bolts, so I got that taken care of. Starter's in, exhaust is on. I think we should all be good. I didn't have any spark plugs, I wanted to do those before we put it in. Unfortunately, I'm an idiot, didn't buy any. So we're going to slip this thing in, hopefully it'll go smoothly. Um, my main concern is destroying the only thing I've ever painted nicely, which happens to be an engine bay of a car. What? Like, this is you. To say to the people why my brain works like this, Mer. Sorry. <laughs> so we're going to try and slip it in there. It should be okay. Uh, thoughts are the ratchet strap is kind of holding the tail shaft up. So if we can loosen that, it'll give it more, more, more of this. And we can just get it right in. So we're going to push the car as far as we can back. Maybe lift it up on a, on a floor jack, slide her in, and try not to destroy all this nice paint. And honestly, if, it's, if it hits one spot, you'll see it on the camera, I'm just going to drop it in and really who cares. We'll just embrace, we'll embrace all the scratches at once. See you guys on the tripod. Thanks, Mer. No problem. Look at this. It's in. I think we gacked the paint just a little bit, actually, like, we're above the transmission on the underside of the firewall, which no one really see. I had to get in there and ride it like a like a rocket ship a little bit, or a bomb, whatever that guy did. I should have my cowboy hat on. It actually fits. I mean, this motor would, would have been in this car, so it's not, not that shocking that it fits, but it went in easier than I thought. Let's just leave it at that. I don't have motor-mount bolts and I need a transmission uh, mount, which I don't have. So it's got a floor jack holding the back up, but it's on the ears in the front. But really, I gotta get an alternator. I think I might have one. See if that radiator from the C body will fit, which I hope it will. I gotta find a fan and a pulley for it because the other one was gacked. But really, we're getting there. I don't know if the small block stuff, or whatever. I got all the stuff from the 318. And that 383 actually, 383 to 440 must be the same. Yeah, yeah. So hopefully all that stuff can go on. I have to, you know, obviously top dead center, do all the wiring and all that, but really, I mean, it needs a wire to the starter, two wires to the starter, which it already has, and some sort of power to the coil, which I think is that wire it's cut. We trace that. And the Almost fuel line. You need to go for ice cream. Yeah. I did cut the fuel line in, by that, that back there, which I haven't fixed yet. And I'm sure the fuel tank's be full of rust, which would be good. I'll buy fuel filters in bulk. But that's what I'm gonna do for now. Danny's cooking dinner, and I'm I'm gonna leave on a high. If I keep working, 
It's, <laughs> we're, we're never going to be better than we are right now. So that's where I'm going to leave it. And uh, I'll get some bolts and some stuff like that tomorrow. I might be back out later tonight. We'll see how motivated I am. But uh, if that's it for now, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Unfortunately, I had an SD card error. This one is now no more. I got a new one in the camera, so hopefully it works. So I came out and I said I was going to work a little bit more on the car, which of course that didn't work up on the SD card. I then switched to my glass camera and you'll have watched me, or maybe you will watch me, I don't know how I'm going to edit this, struggle with this damn intake manifold and it was a nightmare. They're so friggin' heavy and I was struggling with the the double to get the gasket valley pan then das gasket and oh boo. anyways i got it together now i got the linkage on that came with the car i don't know how i'm going to make that work um the carburetor does not fit this manifold obviously it's some sort of adapter okay radiator which is like a c body doesn't quite fit so i'm gonna have to figure out what i'm gonna do there i'm thinking if i just knock the battery tray in a little bit it'll They'll sneak by. Hopefully. I don't know. I got a list of stuff I need to buy tomorrow. I'm beaten. I shouldn't have come out. I should have just left it with the motor in. But I wanted to see the carburetor on it and what it kind of looked like. And the intake manifold. With a little bit of silicone and, and stuff I got holding in place. But I need uh, got my list of stuff tomorrow. I'll be back at it tomorrow. Ready to go. With a pile of new parts. And uh, I don't know. I want to hear this thing make some noise. Hopefully I'll get that to happen tomorrow. We're just like a hot wire type situation but uh if not we'll keep jamming parts on this thing man I, i'm pretty excited i gotta say i'm going to bed i'll see you guys tomorrow all right well another day out in the garage uh just going from work so i've had the motor now for well, this will be day three even though it's only been a couple hours well i got home an hour ago we got her in we got her painted we got her ready to go now we're left it the radiator wasn't going to fit uh we had some carburetor spacing issues and stuff uh, I stopped at a speed shop on way home from work and I ordered the intake manifold. It's, uh, it's like 400 bucks and it's, uh, three days away. But you know what? I think it'll make it worthwhile. Uh, everyone kept bugging me to do it and it sure seems like it'll make a bunch more power. Uh, so instead of kind of trying to fiddle around and get it running with a bunch of adapters and screwing around, I'm just going to leave it with the carburetor back on the shelf for right now. I did get, uh, stuff for oil, an oil change. I got the transmission mount, I got new ballast resistor, valve, I found the valve cover gaskets, they were inside. Bonus, spark plugs were ordered a while ago and one's missing, so that's awesome. But I'll do all the plugs except for the easiest one to get out, we'll go buy one tomorrow. The radiator, I'm hoping I can make it fit by something, I don't know what yet. When I get that figured out, 
Uh, I did get a bag of bolts and I put motor mount bolts in. So the motor's actually bolted in. It's all good there. The transmission is still being supported by the jack. Um, I did this pant this needs another coat there, but this is the transmission uh, kind of cross member type thing. So this will bolt to the transmission and this then kind of fits, uh, I guess in like that ish somewhere. So that's the plan. I want to get the motor so it's set in there properly. Because once it's set in there properly, properly, then I can measure for drive shaft. So there's a bunch of things I got to get going on. Uh, I've talked to my buddies at Lyles. They're going to express ship me some exhaust. Hopefully they will have that this week before the weekend. And I got to go try and talk to my buddy Ryan about getting the drive shaft made. So this is one of those things where if you kind of build cars, build those relationships. Because then when you drop the ball like I do all the time, they'll pick up the slack. So get stuff quickly and all that. That's what we're working on today. Uh, I think we'll just go as much as we can, end the video, and then we'll start again tomorrow and just it'll be like Groundhog Day until this thing is, I mean, today's Monday. I'm thinking we're doing burnouts on Friday, right? Properly, like with a cooling system, with all that junk, you know what I mean? Not just how I usually do it, hot wire to make it run. Well, uh, it'll do a burnout Friday no matter what. How about that? All right. Uh, I'll set the lapsy laps and we'll uh, see where we get tonight. Should be a good one. Well, I'm struggling like crazy. I didn't really do any filming. Things obviously up in the air. Underneath, I'll, uh, I'll slide under in a bit, but I got the transmission up, new mount, cross member in, mint. Exhaust does not fit, which I was hoping it could, but I'll have to chop up a few bits there. To get the down pipes, the drive shaft I have. Uh, actually both of them are too long. This one came from the, like with it. So it's got the yoke and all that, which is good. It's 59 inches. This one's 54 inches. And basically I need 52 inches. So nothing will work, but like I said, I got a drive shaft guy. So we'll get that dealt with. Uh, up top, I pulled the valve covers off and I just kind of, I like put the gasket on, which is a little bit of silicone. So once that's kind of tacked up. I'll bang that together. Um, it's supper time. It's actually late. It's like 8.30, but I'm hungry, so it's supper time. I'm going to get the... When I come back, with the valve covers on. Because you can take the intake manifold off. There's lots of room around that, which is good. No big deal. And when I put all this intake together, everything's silicone together, except it's not silicone to the actual manifold. So I should be able to plop it off, put the new one on. No big deal. So I'll get the valve covers on. I want to get the exhaust. The downpipe's hung, so I have an idea of what I want. The nice thing about this Mopar, it has uh, the little, you know, whatever jut outs, whatever you want to call it, for the dual exhaust. So I'll be pretty slick. I shouldn't have a lot to do. I'll just have to get the angle into the, I should be just kind of almost like damn near straight pipe. Uh, to the muffler and then tailpipes. Valve covers on. And I'd really like to get the radiator fit to see if it will. I do have the other one. I'll grab it from the, the shed. Worst case, I can put it in. Um... Yeah, I mean, realistically, I don't understand what the difference is on the big one, because this one bolt, like, it's got the bolts here, and it does go across, so I might just put that one in temporarily, instead of trying to butcher this other one. You know, I sold myself on that, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab that one out of the shed, see what it looks like, if it needs paint, I'll paint it real quick for supper. Then we can jam that all together, and, uh, I don't know, will a 318 rad cool? I think when I was looking, it was like a 22 and a 26, I think, was the two rad sizes. So, Mopar guys, let me know if it'll work or not. And if it won't, eh, I guess we'll figure it out. Because this one's giant. Like, this one is definitely oversized. But we could always smash it into place. Alright, I'll see you guys at supper. Uh, so I brought in the, the radiator. I actually thought it was bigger because I thought it bolts side to side. So I can clearly see now. This is like the small block, I guess, rad. And the big block one would have just been that much more and had the same mounts. So now this one, the core is the same width as the entire thing. I, I, I really think this rad will be just too dang small. We know this rad cooled that motor, this motor. So, unfortunately, I think... That will be a waste of time, the original one. I don't know if it leaks, that is original of the car. This one, it looks in good shape. And whatever, it was working. So I think I'm going to screw around with that for a little bit before I go to bed. 
Um, I did want to show you guys underneath this thing. I know I haven't really been. I got the exhaust just real hokey set up. At least I know what I got to do. But check this out. Oh, gentle. Hear that noise? So the linkage is all hooked up. It needs uh, needs a little bit of love, not gonna lie. It needs like those little, uh, I don't know what those clips are. I use, I use cotter pins, but we'll go under here. First time I've been under here in a while. So the exhaust, it originally had a crossover that joined on that side and went back. Now, I wanted to make sure I had enough to get around the starter, which I do. So I'll probably end up putting like a 90 or something like that right there. We'll go straight back. And as you can see, we have this nice little area here so the pipe can go straight back and we'll deal with the mufflers and all that back there. Uh, I assume this rod right here is the kick down. It actually hits, there's a bolt right there. And it hits, so either I gotta adjust that bolt or I don't know, move this over somehow. I'm not really too sure. But anyways, we got that all together. Um, oh yeah, there's the cross members and I guess I showed you that. New mount, we're good. So underneath we're doing, we're pretty much set, I think. At least I'm, I'm done being under here. I had to make a little bracket and stuff for this to make this linkage work. Going from the, the C body to the, uh, what this one was, like a 904 or whatever all that junk was. But yeah. So, I think that's basically all I'm gonna do tonight in this video. I'm gonna spend a little bit of time on this radiator. Hopefully I'll get it in. If I can get it in, that'd be a bonus. Slap the valve covers on and be done with it. And then we'll start working on, I don't know, a plethora of other things tomorrow. But yeah, so, wish me luck. I really hope this fits, because that's a nice radiator. I don't really have any money to track down a proper one. There was a guy, it was like $600. You Mopar people are crazy. Uh, well, shockingly enough, I think it actually worked out okay. So, my main concern was the height of the radiator here. I went back and forth with the original one uh, on the factory uh, mounts, and it was the rad the rad cap was just kind of below this cross member or whatever you want to call it, core support. So, that's what I did. Um, it's definitely this was an inch and a half taller, so all that had to go down, which it did and uh, the bottom can actually still be pushed in. So, not touching anything, it's, it's definitely close to whatever these strut arm, whatever you call them are. Um, I think we should be fine with the, the radiator, the lower hose, the upper is going to be very simple, I mean just do whatever I got to do there. So I think that's going to work. My only issue, so I have this spacer which is going to be too big, I believe, but if we get a pulley on there and maybe a couple of washers or something like that, or I can make a little thing. It should be okay. The uh, it's just kissing the the lower crank pulley. It's got four four grooves on it. Obviously, that uh, the New Yorker would have had air conditioning and power steering and all sorts of things, which I'm running uh, an alternator. So if I actually if I have another pulley, that might be the way to go as well. Change all that out. But for right now, we're, we're working with what we got. This is just the fan that came on the 318. So, again, like I guess like a 5 or 6 or whatever the 7 blade fans, the big Dodges have would be nice. But I could also, I mean, let's be honest, put an electric cooling fan on this. I do really like mechanical fans. I'm not concerned with every last horsepower. Uh, I'd rather have the reliability of a big honking fan. So that's, that's perfect. That's going to work. 
Um, I was gonna, what I was gonna do here, I was just gonna slot these holes, and then I can move the battery tray back just uh, like a half an inch. Because I hated that I had to take out the uh, my nice painted uh, support arm there. So now I have this ugly thing there, which sucks. But what are you gonna do? Uh, so if I can slide it back, then we'll be golden. It'll, no one will ever know. It'll just be back one inch. Who cares? There was still room before it hit the whatever the strut tower and stuff. So that'll be that'll be just fine. I just put two self tappers to hold the radiator in for now. Once I have where I want it, I'm just going to drill holes and I'll nut and bolt it in. But it's not touching anything, which is good. And honestly, these Chrysler radiators are pretty slick. I mean, you just you can bolt it right in there. It's like a Chevy. you got to clamp it and screw around and all that. So I think we're doing good. I think it's going to work out just fine. Uh, yeah. I mean, in all reality, if you use the radiator that was with the car and it ran nice and cool, there should be really no issues. So, I've got a long list yet again of things to get. Um, start screwing around with the exhaust, get that kind of where I want it. We'll figure out the radiator, get all that done. we got to do spark plugs, do an oil change. Uh, I guess once we get, we can get the, the starter all hooked up, we can roll it over, find top dead center, drop it in the distributor. All these little things. Uh, I talked to my drive shaft guy. He's good for the next couple of days. So I'll probably be doing that. I'll do a whole video on a drive shaft. I think it'll be interesting to see one built because we're going to do a brand new one which would be awesome. Uh, we got to run some power, or no, transmission cooler lines. I'm going to put a cooler on this thing, I think. Eh, maybe I won't. This this big honking radiator might be okay. We'll see. We'll see where things going to go. I want it to be dead nuts reliable. And uh, yeah, well, that's where I'm leaving it for this. Uh, it was a good video, putting the motor in. It's always fun. Thank you very much for watching. Leave a comment below. Tell your friends, all those things, yada, yada, yada. And uh I'll see you guys tomorrow when I'm working. See you later.